the whole the world title was on the line between John Moxley and Darby Allen because Tony Khan made the match last week after they were partners, right? But the, uh, I think they said he's the number five contender. He's the number five. It's Mark booking, Mark booking. And I classified this as a battle between, and I've said this before. I like Darby Allen's charisma. He has that weird charisma and he makes some of the shit works and he, for him that wouldn't work for other people. And he's got amazing agility. And so, but at the same time, he really is one of these dumb skateboard fucks you see on ridiculousness that get purposely sprays himself in the face with mace and jumps off high shit and doesn't care whether he gets hurt or not. So I'm torn between, I, I like him professionally because of his difference in his style. And I hate people like that on a personal basis. Cause I think they're fucking stupid. And then you've got Moxley who we've made mention, you know, he can talk. If he just looked like Dr. Death Steve Williams, he could carry it off, but he claims to be this badass that looks like a guy that works at Valvoline, and he glorifies, even after he worked for a major company and should have had that trained out of him, he glorifies in the thumbtack, deathmatch, hardcore indie show garbage. It's all about his violence, and you'd have to be fucking nuts to buy this guy as a rabid dog, violent fucking person because you can see him and he's not. He just talks like it and acts like it, which is why it's stone cold Steve Austin cosplay. If, if Dr. Death, Steve Williams could have done this fucking promo, my God, then you'd have a fucking human eating badass. But that no, so I was torn on watching this because it's going to be a baby face match between two guys that I can tell even without it ever meeting either one of them on a personal basis. If I had to spend 15 minutes in a room with either one of these two, I'd cut my fucking throat. But one of them has some charisma and Darby Allen, if all he did was work with guys like Cody and or veteran experienced heels he could learn to work. He didn't, he don't have to do all this goofy bullshit, except when it's the big winning fucking move. He can pull out one of his things. So he actually lives to have a long career and sell. Cause he can do that and fight back without dying. Cause he can do that. You would have a tremendous underdog baby face attraction here. But the more he works with guys like this, where they just do garbage wrestling indie match spots over and over. He doesn't learn anything. That's why I, I just hate to see anyway. And Moxley was announced at 230 pounds. Last week, we had people try and tell me he was six feet, four inches tall, which is, I would have to think ridiculous. And does he look 230? They, they, they add 20 pounds to him and they announce everybody else in the company at like 166 pounds. What the fuck? I don't think it's I, outrageous. Well, it, it, he at least he's over 200 pounds. We know that much. So give the 200 plus to the fucking under 200s that really need it. They introduced some of the, one of these motherfuckers. Who was it? A Kip Sabian that looks 12. They introduced him at 188 pounds. He looks good. You could say 202 and people believe it. And then he sounds grown. Anyway, uh, this is a baby face match between the babyface champion and the hot young babyface underneath babyface uh, challenger that, that all the kids like. So the first two moves of the match are Darby Allen slaps Moxley in the face and Moxley punches Darby Allen. And I decided to start writing things down to see when's the first time, because they didn't lock up. I want to see when the first time they're actually going to do a wrestling move. There was another slap, some chops, clothesline, eye rake, Shoulder in the turnbuckle. And finally, the first wrestling move done by your winner, ladies and gentlemen, John Moxley. He beeled Darby Allen across the ring. Uh, then Moxley manhandled him like a small child. That was okay. That should be done. Darby Allen ducked and flipped around and tried to evade him and did his, some of his flips. And that should be done because that's his thing. And especially if he was the only one doing all these flips in the company, 
instead of every other goddamn idiot doing it. It would stand out. They had to fight to the stage because it's a Moxley match, and he refuses to use the fucking ring, and I'm getting so fed up with it. You can't... Empty arena match is fine. Uh, the Ring of Honor guys used to love to go to the fucking floor in their matches because they they're used to this indie bullshit where they all have to fight on the floor. And I'd scream at him. I'd say, "You're you're working flat buildings as it is. You don't ha you're not in a real arena. You don't have bleacher seats. You don't have people looking at the ring from up to down. So nobody can fucking see you when you're fighting out around the ringside. When you're fighting in the building." And the crowd surrounds you. Nobody can fucking see you at all. Also, we're going to eliminate that shit straight off the bat because you're goddamn going to get us all sued and put under the fucking courthouse because Sinclair Broadcasting is a billion-dollar company. So nobody's allowed to go over the rail out into the people because that's the stupidest thing you can ever do. Um, when the business was legitimate, the heels would have gotten cut before they had time to do anything out in that environment. So just stay away from that to begin with. And don't get out of the ring more than you have to, because especially if you're in a flat building, people can't fucking see you. Well, now they ain't got any fans in the building, so no, they don't have to worry about anybody seeing them to begin with, so now they barely use the fucking ring. Because they all have this fucking outlaw indie mindset. And they think if you're outside the ring, then everything's cooler. Fuck. So anyway, they fight to the stage like they do in every match. And then Moxley throws Darby Allen off the stage into the ring post. Which that would have been a hell of a deal if it was a fucking angle. Or a goddamn finish. Or the guy couldn't continue. That would have given him an out. But it was just a bump to go to the break. So fuck it. Then they come back. Darby Allen is in a fucking hold. But he gives Moxley two middle fingers. And I'm thinking that USA used to fucking blur that or digitize it when Austin did it, but Austin is the only one that was allowed to do it because he was so over he could get away with it. But now we're just blatantly letting middle card guys not only say shit and son of a bitch and bullshit on TNT, but now they can give the middle fingers. Uh, and it's a babyface match. Did I mention that? And then Moxley gets some more heat on Darby Allen. The dirtiest wrestling in a babyface match ever, I wrote. They went back to the floor. Darby Allen just dives out of the ring onto his fucking head. If he hits the guy, fine. If not, he's, he's going head first. Then he went off the top rope out onto the floor the same way. Just flips and just dives head first. He doesn't care if he hurts himself. And, that, and I don't want to work with that guy because if he don't care if he hurts himself... How much of a shit's he going to give about me? This whole thing is fucking insane. It, 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 this match was not rotten like the Dork Order or the Young Bucks. The, the shit looked good. It's just every time I see Moxley, it's in a match that comes off indie level. And it, it, that's, it, it's just, that's the way it is. Then finally... Wardlow comes out and distracts the referee. MJF comes out and rolls in and nails Moxley with the title belt. And I like this false finish because earlier MJF had the throwaway line. Well, sure, I'd, I'd hate to wrestle a 150-pound emo kid for the world title instead of Moxley. Well, of course he'd rather wrestle Darby Allen, right? Anybody would. He's fucking 60 pounds difference, right? So now he's trying to help Darby Allen win the title, even though Darby doesn't know he's trying to do it. So I get this spot. However, go back and look at this. What was wrong with that belt shot? Did you notice? I don't know. John Moxley takes superplexes off the roof into barbed wire, power bombs into thumbtacks, the king of the ultra violence, all this stuff, right? The best worker in the business in the middle of the ring is going to give him a belt shot to the head and he covered up for it. Fucking threw his hands up and fucking blocked it. All the shit we've seen him do and all these fucking suplexes and fucking bumps off the roof and the fucking talks and the barbed wire and the broken glass and six people beating him up with garbage cans in the fucking breezeway of the arena, that was fine. But one guy in the middle of the ring with both his eyes on me is going to give me a shot with the belt, which is one of the easiest things to work if you do it right, and he's one of the best workers in the company. I'm going to throw my hands up and block it on camera. Fucking good job there, Stone Cold. Anyway, 
Then Darby Allen hits his coffin drop finish because he didn't know that the interference was made. One, two, and Moxley barely kicks out. That was a nice false finish. I can see the fucking neck beards at home going, oh, so that's what he meant. And they're going to do this. And they're going to switch that. And then and their thought process was going toward this is how they're going to do it. So I can see they would believe that. However, then Moxley got juice for the belt shot. On purpose this time, obviously, which because he blocked it, which would have registered better if Sammy Guevara had not hit Matt Hardy over the head with a fucking axe and he nearly bled out. Because now it was just a little color. So I would have eliminated the fucking juice on the belt shot after the display that we saw earlier because it didn't mean anything after that. Then Darby Allen goes for another coffin drop. But Moxley catches him in a sleeper, and he's got him in the sleeper forever, and it looks like he's about to be out, and then suddenly he comes back around, then he almost goes out, and then suddenly he comes back around. Nobody knows how to sell a sleeper anymore. You sell it wildly at the start as if you're surprised you caught in it, and you're looking for a way out, and you slowly fade. You don't just become motionless at the start and then fight in the middle. And then Moxley let go of his own sleeper to pile drive at Darby Allen, and he got a two count. Can anybody beat anybody here without going way too far and just diminishing everything? Then Moxley finally hit his fucking glorified DDT finish and beat him, and it was flat because he had had him in the hold forever, then let him out on purpose to give him a pile driver then fucking hit his fucking finish and then covered him. So that was flatter than four o'clock. A nice wrestling move where you caught the fucking kid because you were more experienced. That would have been lovely. But I don't think Moxley knows any wrestling moves. He doesn't use any. And then they hugged and kissed afterwards. Well, Moxley hugged him and kissed him. Darby Allen was selling unconscious. But just to make sure we know that it's all friends wrestling, they hugged and kissed some more. I can't rip this many pieces of paper at one time. It'd be doing a phone book. I've got to rip them all each individually. Can you stop it? Stop it! Jesus Christ, how many pages do you have? Show took six months to get over with. <laughs> Stop ripping <laughs> That's a lot of notes. I'm halfway through NXT now. <laughs> Just got to AW. Goddamn, no wonder I go through so many notepads. Yeah, too bad that company won't send you any more pens. Well, there you have it. I guess National Pen won't be fucking uh, calling me again after that. Now I've got shit all over it. Oh. <laughs> well, you did it to yourself. You did it to oh. yourself.